Well, it's a scary day indeed. Uh, we were just back from a vacation that my family took together and had been burglarized. So we were settling with the insurance company about this burglary that happened while we were gone. And uh, I was usually working in a restaurant in the late evenings and that night was my night off so I was out with friends. But my dad was out of town on business and he had flown to San Francisco for that. When he left he said, take care of your mom and your brother's chum and we'll get to those smoke detectors as soon as I get back. We had tried to install some smoke detectors the night before and didn't have the right batteries for them. So it was quite ironic that I came home from visiting some friends that night, had a glass of milk, turned in as I normally would, and then woke an hour later to intense heat and a bright orange flickering light. It's incredibly traumatic. You were so heroic. You got your two brothers out the window, saved their lives, tried to go and save your mom and youngest brother, couldn't get through the fire. Um, and you were hailed as a hero for all of that, but you didn't feel that at all, did you? No, and I, I'm not sure most heroes do at the time. It's just, it was, I think, part of my genetic makeup has always been to go to the heart of danger. And as soon as I woke, I knew I just reflexively to get as everyone out and my mom and brother unfortunately were on the opposite side of the house so my brothers one who shared a bedroom with me Tim woke up right away and Dan and Packy in the room adjacent were also awakened by my screams and um, were climbing out their windows so I felt confident that they would make it out but in trying to get to the other side of the house I lost oxygen and punched a window out by knocking it off its tracks that precluded me from escaping that way so I turned toward the stairs and fell part way down the stairs, but rather than go back up and out, I made the critically vital decision to get out as fast as possible was to go to the front door. But the front door heated in the heat and precluded me from opening it just because the, the metal had swollen. And then I got as low as I could and made it to the back of the house where the firemen found me, locking the door actually. Right. So, of, of course, you wouldn't be able to escape a tragedy like that unscathed. And you came out of that, that horrific event with about 60 to 70 percent of your body right. uh, burned with a 20 percent chance of survival. Can you tell us about the brutal days following the fire and your recovery? Well, I, uh, from the moment I regained consciousness on the way to the hospital in the ambulance, I could hear and knew something terrible was happening. I was in an incredible amount of pain and, and was worried about my mother and brother that I hadn't been able to get out of the house. But I honestly prayed that God would take my life. I was in so much pain and so afraid and overwhelmed with reality. And I just kept saying, please, Jesus, take me in your arms. Please take me. I was a strong believer. Um, having been raised in a Christian and Catholic family, um, but I was imagining that I could not tolerate one more second of this pain and that yet one more second would go by. And I kept praying that God would end it in any way possible. And I was just so afraid that my parents, or my mother and brother hadn't made it out and then what, what would my dad hear? And he's in San Francisco and just, uh, an overwhelming set of realities that came down on me at one time. You're 16 years old. You're facing multiple surgeries after that. As a matter of fact, one of your surgeries, you regained consciousness but couldn't move. Yes. Just a horrifying experience. But something spiritual happened as well. You, you actually died. I did. Tell me about that. Well, I was on the table for the first surgery of many, um, but the doctors had waited until I was physiologically stable enough to tolerate a blood loss and the things that happened during surgery. And as the anesthesiologist put me to sleep and said, count back from 100, I did. And then I heard doctors talking and then I could feel pain in my stomach and my arms and someone lifted my arm off the table, let it drop to the side and blood was dripping down off my arm. I realized I was awake and they had started surgery and that, wait a minute, I'm not supposed to feel anything. The only thing that I'd been looking forward to for 10 days was that you would be put to sleep and I wouldn't have to feel the pain. Wow. And that was the first opportunity to be relieved of the pain. So I was 
very aware that I was not asleep and was feeling every little detail of the surgery. Um, the doctors became concerned too and said, we're losing copious amounts of blood. Let's hold up, figure out what's going on here. And that was an overwhelming fear that I couldn't move a muscle and communicate to them that I'm feeling this because I was under a medically induced paralysis. So the drugs were keeping me from even being able to blink an eye. And I'm starting to say, guys, I'm feeling everything you're doing. And I could feel this scraping down my abdomen and around my flanks and the blood dripping down off the table. And, um, horrifying. Mm. And praying, dear Jesus, please take me, take me, take me, take me. And then all of a sudden, I was pain free, as if I was floating above my body. It would be in a position like in a lazy boy recliner with my knees partly flexed, my arms resting at the sides, and I'm just sort of hovering. And I could feel this gentle, warm light come over me. And it was sort of like lying on the beach with your eyes closed. You can feel the warmth and the softness and, the, and you can see the light through your lids, but it was very bright and very warm and a feeling of love and forgiveness and tolerance and euphoria. Just, Total euphoria, and I'm, th oh my God, literally, I said. And there I am, just feeling this incredible presence of love, and I felt my mother and my brother, and a grandfather whom I hadn't thought of for years, who died when I was one, and I just felt this total sense of peace, that everything was exactly as it should be, everything always has been as it should be, is and always will be. It's a perfectly orchestrated plan of God's. And I just started laughing to myself, just so happy and euphoric, not about any one particular thing, but certain that God is with me and my prayers are being answered. But then there was this sudden awareness that not yet. I could see in my mind this gentle slope toward the brightness and the light and the warmth. And it was floating toward that direction but also knowing that somewhere out there is, a, is another side I won't return from yet, but it's not my time. It wasn't a decision I made or God made. It was like there was a board meeting and it was understood. This wasn't yet my time to be with God, although I was with him. Um, there was gonna be some pain and, and a lot of surgeries to recover from. I had that knowledge that soon in the injury that this was gonna be a big recovery. Wow. wow. Despite the power of that spiritual experience, Mark, the, the recovery outside of that surgery, um, you know, involved a fair amount of uh, discouragement and depression along the way, and you faced multiple surgeries thereafter. Tell us a little bit about your recovery after that surgery, which, you know, I'm sure, you know, it, it just was indescribable pain and, and, and discomfort. Well, even when I woke, um I knew they had opened my abdomen and I could feel these tight, what they called retaining sutures because I was so swollen and so much fluid, over, so much fluid overload that they couldn't even get my abdomen closed with regular sutures and they used these big retention sutures. And again, I felt this incredible pain. It was a new pain in my abdom, abdomen and stomach that I hadn't felt before. But I did have a certain awareness that it was supposed to be. They just go with the flow, ride this ride, and trust your God. But yet I was afraid. And I've often said, having seen the burning bush, so to speak, you would think all of my decisions would be so much easier. Haven't we all said, boy, if God would just tell me it, just so I know for sure that little bit of doubt I have could be erased, life would be a different story. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't wake that way. I didn't wake with that certainty. There was still that little tiny part of me that wasn't sure or that questioned why was this happening to me mm -hmm. and why did I have to lose my mom and my brother so yes um, Mark I did feel like I had a partner in my recovery but it was not necessarily a completely synchronized relationship and there was some contention and some anger mm -hmm. I'm sure you know years later I realized it was anger but I felt abandoned in the moment um, now my mom's gone and my poor father, I was so heartbroken for the pain he must be suffering, having lost a child and a wife and his oldest son is in critical condition. So I thought recovery was possible maybe at that point, but I sure didn't know how I was gonna find the strength to do what had to be done. 
And you know, I think you're a 16 year old boy, just mm -hmm. lost his mom and his brother, going through this incredible trauma, all these surgeries. Of course you struggle, it's completely understandable, but you had this incredible doctor, Dr. Fratt, who came in and really helped you in one of your darkest moments. Tell me about him. He's a spiritual warrior, I've always called him. Um, general surgeon who was the director of the burn unit, not by choice, but in his younger years, uh, was a trauma surgeon and the burn unit was not being attended to enough and he sort of found himself in that vein of medicine and then became a master of it. But not only because he was scientifically brilliant and a good doctor graduating from a great medical school, Case Western Reserve University, but because he had a heart of a giant. Just so much love and compassion that he was someone anyone could easily identify with. Just a strong, charismatic personality and a strong believer. He would go to service or to church on Sundays if he was at the hospital, which was most Sundays. Um, but he had a strong faith that I could see and was readily aware of that something was special about this guy. And what did he tell you that changed your perspective? Well, many things, many things over the years. But early on, I remember him talking about the old analogy of a milk bottle being half full or half empty, depending on your perspective. That was a completely brand new idea or concept to me. But gradually I, be, I began to understand that, okay, here's what we're working with. This is the asset pile, here's the deficit pile. Let's hold on to these. This isn't gonna do us any good. We go from here and we take every positive thing we can. And that was a total way of thinking that he inspired in me and still well, does. Yeah. It sounds like Dr. Fratt had such a, I mean, obviously he was a big part of your physical recovery, yes. Mark, but also your spiritual, emotional recovery. Indeed. Um, tell us a little bit about what he, Dr. Fratt inspired you to do, because you'd gone on to become a physical therapist, and then something in life prompted well, you to go back to med school, become a, a reconstructive surgeon yourself. Uh, tell us how Dr. Fratt's influence on your life has impacted your, your desire to see people healed. Well, he personally develops relationships with many of his patients. And I think as a physician, I, I like to do that too, but he's got something unique, something special that's so charismatic. But even in the difficult times, he was able to encourage and inspire and make me find that little bit of extra strength that I might have. And I think it was just um, his personal attachment to his goals in life and his purpose. It was very sound and and you know, the this, this strength that I like to think my Heavenly Father um, provided me was augmented by his encouragement. One of the things I love about your story is that you did become a reconstructive surgeon. You are helping people in many of the same painful situations you were in. You've actually worked with Dr. Fratt in the same burn unit that you were in, which is only God can write a story that, that, that is that amazing. But I'm thinking of people watching this interview right now who are going through their own medical challenges and you meet them every day. Mm -hmm. And they're kind of where you are in that moment of despair and wrestling with God and why did this happen to me? And you know, all, all the questions that you had, what would you say to somebody in that moment? One of the things I tell my kids and anybody that asks specifically, I mean, what, what gets me out of my own grief and my own struggle and my own pessimism about life in general, and that's if I can find someone else that I can turn to and offer some kind of help to, someone else who's in a similar situation. And that has always been the most rewarding part of medicine to me sharing my experience. And my barometer with patients oftentimes is, once they ask me how I got my scars, I know they're moving forward out of their own pain and they're aware again of all those that surround us. And so I found out early on that if I could help others by sharing my experience or kind of, as, as some other patients had done with me, of course, um, that it was such a positively rewarding thing. It was you know, self-motivating. Oh, you are such an inspiration. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. But, yeah, I mean, you, you obviously dealing with your patients and people that you come in contact with, Mark, you've got credibility because you've been there, you've been in their shoes. And thank you so much for sharing oh, your story you. and inspiring our viewers and inspiring Cheryl and I 
in our faith journey. We thank you so much for coming and sharing and, and continued blessings in your, in your work you. in, in the medical field. Absolutely, and, and hey, if, if that's you watching right now, maybe you're in a medical situation and you're like, Mark, I need a Dr. Frat in my life. I need someone to come and encourage me and pray for me. Right from the hospital, you can call our prayer lines. We would love to pray with you and encourage you. That number is one 273 4444 Whatever you are facing, you do not have to do it alone. We'll be right back.